All right. As people are getting into the room, I'm going to try to start this thing. All right, welcome. Um, so this is a lightning talk that I submitted because uh, uh, NDC wanted stuff on AI. And I don't really use AI. So I was like, what, what can I actually talk about here? And so I, I, I selected the only topic that I actually kind of care about when it comes to AI, which is uh, well, you know, developer productivity, whatever that means. Um, this is a lightning talk. I'm going to try to be relatively quick about it. Uh, but if anyone wants to talk more about this, then you know, uh, ask me afterwards. Uh, and usually I have long talks and uh, basically run out of time there as well. So we'll see how this goes. So my name is Robert. I work at Soprasteria. I do a lot of things. Uh, I'm, among other things, a Microsoft MVP for Azure. Do stuff with Cloud Native there uh, in, in the Azure Cloud. Uh, and I'm a CNCF ambassador for the stuff that I do in Tag App Delivery. And I do a lot of things, host stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Again, I can't talk too much about this because I'm using up all my time. So AI. That's cool, right? Right? Sure. Uh, so uh, one thing that I use AI for usually is to generate pictures for slides, right? Because that's you know what kind of put in there. Uh, and I got this yesterday, so that didn't work. Uh, it might be the prompt that I put in, uh, as, as if you can see down there, it's relatively small text. I think I confused the entire thing, which is the issue. Uh, and that is one of the issues about AI, for, from my perspective at least. It's relatively easy to get it to go off tracks. Um, so, when, uh, when AI became a thing, uh, I started thinking like, all right, well, this is going to get weird really quickly. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to, and it seems like it's the thing that actually works well, is using it to, for, to help when you're developing code and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm not a developer per se, I'm a, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, platform engineer, I create stuff, so sometimes I write code. I help people that write code, so I need to be able to read code. Uh, but I, you know, I usually code in, in um, uh, stuff like Terraform and infrastructure as code and stuff like that. So uh, I was thinking, that that's great. That's a relatively small subset of things. You know, what can go wrong? Uh, so that's kind of, that's kind of, and I was kind of right, it turns out. Uh, for doing productivity things as a developer, AI actually kind of works well. Because who knew that using magic word writing robots to do writing words, you know, worked out, right? So, um, what are the options that you have when it comes to writing code with robots? Um, these are some of <laughs> some of many. It turns out, as soon as AI became a thing, a lot of people made basically stuff that reached out to OpenAI and came back with the same. So they're basically all the same, more or less. But these are the ones that people talk about and that actually work. Uh, ChatGPT, not really that great. Uh, you know, we talk about AI hallucinating stuff. Uh, one time I, uh, there was a resource that didn't exist in Terraform. So I thought, you know, let's ask ChatGPT about, like, how can you set up this resource, expecting it to use something else to send API calls, something. Uh, and I basically just imagined that this was a resource that existed and just basically gave what could have been, and said, this is how we do it. And it's like, well, that's not going to work. So ChatGPT, not really that great at that. Uh, it's a good sparring partner and so, so on and so forth. I, I was tired of it like two years ago, but that's a different topic. Speaking of things I've been using for a while, GitHub Copilot. Uh, before there was a public beta, before there was a private beta, I was in the beta for GitHub Copilot. I've been using it ever since. And I basically just turned it on and never turned it off. And it actually does work. It, it's helping me with a lot of things. I'm going to come back to that. Uh, JetBrains has one AI assistant. Apparently, it takes more context based on the IDE from JetBrains, uh, which is a good thing, because that's a thing that GitHub Copilot not, haven't always been that great at, uh, taking into context like the entire project that they're working on. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. It's, it's kind of weird. Uh, and then there's the one called Codium, which I learned about two days ago. Uh, <laughs> and um, it's basically the same as GitHub Copilot, but it is free for people to use, which means a lot of people rated it highly. Uh, I think it's not as good as Copilot, because weirdly enough, you get get what you pay for. <laughs> if you use free stuff to do stuff that you know pay tools do, then you might get a slightly worse result. Um, all right, I'm already using half of my time. 
talking about this. This is great. So practical use cases. What can you use uh, uh, AI to when you do coding? Well, all these things. And uh, autocomplete code in progress, we kind of had that before, but it was r relatively restricted because, you know, it could know you know, what kind of functions were underneath and kind of give you something to go on. But with AI, it can be a little bit more creative. So for instance, you start writing out like a name for a function and you kind of go, okay, well, what should I call it? It can actually come with something and it might be what you were looking for. Works great for me with ADHD because I just look at text and go like, all right. And then I sit for like 10 minutes trying to figure out something that's really not important. You know, sometimes it's just good getting something out there. Um, same with comments and documentation. I use it for comments a lot because sometimes you need to comment code, apparently. Um, turns out, uh, again, if there's a function, I kind of go, well, can't you read the function? I, you just read it. But apparently, I have to document it. So that also becomes a thing where I get stuck. With, with these uh, uh, tools, usually you just end up getting something, and it might be good enough for whatever you want to do. Uh, generate tests and explain code. I'm going to show a demo of it, uh, if everything works. Uh, fix non-working code, that could work. Sometimes it actually doesn't work, that's a different thing. There might some, be some non-working code on the AI side, but that's, again, a different story. And repeating tasks, one of the things people, like if you're creating a list of something, example code or something, it, you could start off and then it kind of just goes like, oh, how many do you want? And then you don't have to do those things. Uh, stuff like that, or um, for instance, if you have a uh, piece of code that is relying on something else and that doesn't exist, you know, as soon as you start writing something, it could populate the entire thing and it might be close enough, you know. So, um, some practical use cases there. All right, six and a half minutes. So, um, let's see if this is big enough. This is GitHub Copilot, um, and it's basically just I'm trying to create a function called Hello World. And it kind of just knows how to do a hello world, which is not really that impressive, but in itself, it's like I didn't have to write all these things. Same with comments. I'm going to try to pause the video because <coughs> it goes a little bit too fast um, because you get really efficient when you do stuff with AI. Um, so th in this case, hello world returns a string. It's not really that great, but you know it is what it is. Also, it's not a really you know hard to figure out function, so you know probably didn't have to comment on this. Um, but what I all right, let's try to screw this up. What I do want to do now is create a test uh, and in Go, if people here aren't familiar, if Go tests are basically just, you have the same um, same file name um, uh, with, uh, with uh, underscore test and then you import a test library. Oh, oh, damn it, I knew that was going to happen. Um, so you create a new file, underscore test, and then you import a, a test uh, library. Uh, and at first, as you can see, it didn't know, but I put in T and then it understood. And since this is very contextualized, I'm, I'm, I'm creating a test file for a specific file with a specific function. It kind of just knew what I wanted, and it works, uh, which is great. Uh, so I tried the same with Codium, and as you can see, hopefully, um, it gets kind of crazy after a while. Um, so I create a function. Um, I write in hello and it kind of just went like, oh, yeah, I want to you know, have a string in there. All right, oh, cool. So, you know, a little bit more dynamic, cool. Uh, generate some Go doc. I thought that was a good idea. I got this block of text and I, I'm like, oh, all right, apply it. Then it overwritten the start of the function for some reason. I was like, well, that's not what I want. So I go back and it's, oh, okay, it's gone now. So I have to go, you know, go back again. Now I have to copy the code, but there's this annoying thing on top. That, uh, that I have to move away, which apparently I probably could get rid of, but you know, it's there by default, which is kind of sucks. And all right, well, it's, uh, it's more verbose, but there's also more happening in the, in the function. So I'm creating a, a test file, and straight away it, it misunderstood what I was trying to do with the package name, which is kind of a very easy thing to do in, in or a standard thing to do in Go. Um, but the rest of it, it kind of, you know, it, it did fine. I, uh, move across the window. All right, there you go. I tab complete. I get all the things that I need. That that seems good. Uh, and obviously, you know, I want to read through this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good. Run test. All right, it says okay. And then I want to want to try to do the same thing again and get some some documentation for this. And then I get this thing. And it 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 kind of yeah. 
this is the most documentation of a simple <laughs> test that I've ever seen. It's like, you know, it's, at some point it gets too verbose. You know, you don't have to explain it that that in depth. All right. So again, time. Uh, let's go to the other example. This is a, a, a um, you know a project that I had laying around with some code. It's like three years old, so don't don't judge me. Um, and I'm going to try to th think about this. If like I'm, I'm dropped into this project, right? And I don't know what stuff does. There's apparently this fiber thing, and it's using something called logger new. And I'm like, all right, wh what is this? I, I know what it is, but you know, imagine that I didn't. And I asked uh, 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 Copilot to explain this to me. And I uh, first I was thinking, oh, it uses three references. That's kind of cool. But then I got lost because there's a lot of text coming up, and it's a lot of text. So if you really want to know how this works, you know, <laughs> there you go. And I was like, oh, well, okay, cool. Um, and then I just checked. It uses the, the file that I'm in, and then it folds down the things that are imported, and kind of that's how it managed to figure out what's going on. And then I asked, like, how, can you simplify this for me? Because you know I'm stupid, apparently. Uh, and then I actually get a concise, you know, this is what it does. This is how we implement it, and a bit, like very to the point, which is great. And then I actually came up with a suggestion, like, uh, what if you want to do different formatting on the logs? Like, All right, I haven't thought about that. Click that, and get a actually proper uh, description of how to change the format logs. And it's, this, this works fine. So if you are a newbie on a project, this could actually work out pretty well. Um, so again, time. Wrapping up, is AI here to take over the world? Well, maybe. So just like this, I again put in a really long, st stupid prompt, and I, I didn't get what I wanted. Uh, but that's because I kind of confused the thing by starting off and then changing my mind. <laughs> Which is probably not great. So, the uh, the thing here is to, you know, things to consider. First of all, you need to be concise uh, because obviously you can pretty easily confuse the AI, you know, and, you know, artificial intelligence. The intelligence part is, you know, it's a fu future feature. Um, where did the code come from? Because it just where did, where does it come from? It just magically appears. Uh, actually, I saw that the Open Tofu project now has a thing where if you want to contribute code to open tofu please turn off ai because it might pull you know code from the terraform you know bsl protected uh, code base and put that in and then all of a sudden you're copying code from a, a you know that's not really great uh, apparently there's a way to kind of um, check sources i didn't know because again i just put this thing on and just been using it for many years and it's been working so you know features are getting added all the time um, Working code does not good mean good performing code. It might it just means that you got the results that you were looking for. So uh, this is where you, as a developer, kind of has to go like, all right, well, you did the thing, but you're doing it in a really stupid way. So that's where you have to get in and, and do stuff. And, and robots are not always right. They have a tendency of being wrong, actually, quite a lot of times. So you know, be wary of that. Make sure that you check this stuff. So. That's the really quick run through of how to be a little bit more productive. Uh, feel free to scan the code and give me some feedback on this if anyone wants to. And if not, just feel free to reach out and say hi. All right, thank you.